Hey Ligari Nation! In this video, you will watch how we coated these custom-built countertops. They were built for this beautiful home, and the result is amazing. We'll walk you through the process of how we got this exact look. It is directly applied over wood. You can do this too. After watching the video, head to the description for the link to get your kit. Welcome back to Ligari guys. On this project, we're gonna be coating some countertops that were pre-built and they bring them to us. It's a, it's a local builder. They built some high-end homes. They wanted to do some Ligari countertops um, in their home. So they built these, they bring them in and I'll just kind of go over what they did um, as far as building them and prepping them. So they did two sheets of three quarter inch MDF. I, I wanna say they glued and nailed those together and then obviously, the seams, they bondoed all the seams, filled the seams, routered the edges. And so right here is two sheets of uh, three quarter inch MDF. And then we have a piece of uh, three quarter inch MDF as well, cut down uh, inch and a half, right? Same width as, as the wood tops. You can also use base trim for that, works really well. And it's already got a rounded edge, so you don't have to router them but they routered these. Obviously, like I said, guys, filled the seams. We always wanna fill any seams or gaps, especially in the faces, so all the nail holes everywhere that they um, attach this face is filled, sanded smooth. These corners, everything's sanded, filled smooth. Um, and so these are basically ready to go. And then before we prime it, we always wanna make sure these are nice and clean and always make sure they're level. So these are all leveled out, they're all clean. So these are basically ready to be um, coated. So we obviously would start with our primer. So for this um, countertops, I'm, for these countertops, I'm gonna be using a gallon and a half of pigmented white. I don't need the whole gallon and a half, so I'll measure out what I need. Um, obviously our white WB primer. The effects are gonna be our highlights. So we're gonna have a white base, which is the epoxy. We're gonna do our silver effects, um, and that's gonna be our highlights. And then we're gonna finish it off with our matte urethane top coat. Really, really cool look. Um, very simple when we're doing effects, our, our, our highlights with, with our Ligari effects. We don't have to mix up more resin. We just simply squirt this out, blend it in, and it gives you some really cool natural looks um, on your project. So, all right guys, so I bring you up to speed on, on where these are at, how they were built, how they were prepped, and so now we can start um, with the primer. So I'm gonna go over mixing the primer. We'll get these other products that we're gonna use later on in this video out of the way. So the first step in uh, the countertop process is obviously the primer. We have the best primer on the market um, for chemically bonding to smooth surfaces. Obviously wood's a little porous, so it's gonna wanna soak into that, but when you guys are going over Formica, granite, tile, stuff like that, that's a smooth surface, um, this, is, this is made to bond to that. So um, like I said, best primer out there. If you guys haven't tried it, go to Ligari.com check it out and if you guys think you you know of a better primer let us know i'll, I'll test it apples to apples um, and we'll see how well it uh, performs compared to our primer so for mixing two to one ratio you need about 0 0.4 right around 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 ounces per square foot we have about 25 square feet here so i'm just going to make a little extra i'm going to make about 16 ounces because i'm probably going to want to hit my edges and my faces twice since we're doing a white primer. We always want to have our faces, top corners, uh, especially when we're doing white, we want that primer to be solid white. We don't want to be able to see through that. So I'll probably wind up doing two coats on that. So I'm going to make a little bit extra. We'll give these a shake before we use them. Another benefit of this primer is it's a fast cure. So it dries extremely fast. So we're making 16 ounces. We always wanna add 10% of whatever we're making of water. 10% of 16 ounces is 1.6 ounces. We're gonna add that of water. And then we're gonna mix this up. Stir stick, one and a half to two minutes. We're gonna mix it for scraping the sides and scraping the bottom. So I'm just gonna pour bead out the middle, cross roll it. Um, it is a lot easier to dip and roll out of a roller tray. It does take a little bit longer. Um, but like I said, if, if, if you're gonna pour beads down the middle like I am, just do sections at a time. And always remember, 
when you start out, it's gonna soak up a lot of that primer. And I'm using a three eight snap roller and we've already de-shedded it. So check it out guys, we got some really porous wood here. Obviously it's soaked in a lot to this wood. Typically don't see this on MDF, um, but sometimes it happens. So this one's soaked up a lot more than I would say that guy. Obviously this one looks like it's kind of doing the same thing. So we're gonna hit it again because we don't wanna lose a lot of resin soaking into the wood. And we also wanna make these faces perfectly white but I didn't wait. Once I got done priming these, I'm going back and priming again. Okay, we'll throw a fan on this and we'll flash dry this stuff by moving some air over it. We'll be able to apply the epoxy um, right over this primer probably within about a half hour, 45 minutes. We wanna go over it tacky and we don't wanna wait longer than two hours. So if we're priming, we wanna make sure we're epoxying over that primer before that two hour window of it drying. So the primer's dry, <clears throat> it's tacky to the touch. We put some um, fans on it, we kind of flash dried it. it, took about 25, 30 minutes. Um, like I said before guys, make sure you're doing epoxy over the primer before that two hour mark because it's going to wind up setting up too much and it's going to become a sealed surface and then we're not going to get a chemical bond between our epoxy and the primer. So we want to go over it when it's tacky. Next thing is for our standard kit designs, we use about four ounces per square foot. So I would need about three quarts of resin for these tops, but I always like to make a little extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make about 120 ounces. That way I have plenty of resin um, for the tops. I'm gonna have more resin that can flow over the faces. So the more resin you use, the easier your projects are and the nicer your faces and edges look. So I'm gonna do uh, 80 ounces of part A, 40 ounces of part B, dump it into here, mix it, and then I'm gonna do a secondary mixing container just to make sure I don't have any soft spots um, or unmixed resin, especially on the sides, right? If you're only mixing with one cup, you got to really scrape your size good, scrape the bottom good, and I wouldn't let it all drain out, right? As long as we use a secondary mixing container, we can tip this upside down. We can scrape everything out of that container, and we don't have to worry about resin not setting up. So, like I said, we got our gallon and a half kit here. We're not going to use it all. So we're going to do 80 ounces, 80 ounces of part A, and then I'll do 40 ounces in this container of the part B. Okay, so now I got my A and B measured out. So I'm gonna take the B, add it to the five quart container. It's gonna give us 120 ounces. So I'm gonna go up and down three times and then I'm gonna pour into the secondary container then I'm gonna go up and down two more times. We call that 3P2. This ensures a thoroughly mixed batch of resin and we never have to worry about unmixed part A or B on our projects. So that was one, we'll do that two more times. I'll spin excess off in the secondary container and then we're going to pour this out into our secondary container mixing container all right so now we're going to scrape the bottom get everything out that we can all 
and then we'll go up and down two more times and then I know for sure I'm not gonna have any issues with unmixed resin. Okay, so that's ready to be dumped. Show you guys a cool trick on how to keep your paddle wheels clean. Five gallon bucket, you guys can obviously use smaller buckets. Denatured alcohol is inside the bucket. And then I just spin this, I'll spin this off first in the garbage can, just to get the majority off. And then I'm gonna go forward in reverse Put the bucket away from me so it doesn't splash in my eyes. Perfectly clean paddle wheel. Just take a rag or a paper towel and we'll just wipe the shaft off. Get in between some of these. And we'll have a brand new one every time we go to use it. What I'm gonna do to spread this, I'm gonna take one of our notch floor squeegees that we have. These work great for floors, even for countertops. We just wanna cut them down. And I like to cut them down about, about like that so I can still use the handle. You can still use these edges as well. Um, but these work great for spreading the product out quick. Um, and it gives you a nice even surface over your whole countertop section. So I'm just gonna take a, a battery powered skill saw. And we're just gonna cut this thing. Like I said, we can use these as well, but I do like having the handle. Makes it easy to push it, hold on to it. Just make sure we get any of the debris off of this before we start using it. Okay, so we're gonna start just pouring a bead down the middle. We wanna get this dumped out quick as we can. We don't wanna let it sit in the bucket at all. And remember, I made extra resin, so it'll be nice and thick, flow over our edges really well. And then the easiest way to spread it is just push it around. So I'm not trying to push it off the edges just yet, just get it close. So you guys can see, you can see how fast these spread it out. Now I know I have a good thickness everywhere and then we can obviously clean these and reuse these multiple times. So now we're gonna take three eight snap roller. It's been de-shedded and I'm just gonna roll over everything. Not applying any pressure. Now we can hit our faces once the top's done. So keep in mind when we're doing thicker pours, this is gonna spread it. This is gonna pull it too tight. So I'm not really pressing down all the way. I'm just kind of helping spread out the product. So it is gonna be a little bit thicker, but we can still spread it out quick. Cause if I pull this tight, you can see how much product I'm pushing, right? But we want it nice and thick. So if I just go real light, move it around real quick, and that's part of why we take the roller. That'll help even it out as well.
Base coat's that simple, guys. We got the top done, face is coated. We got a good amount on there, so it's flowing over those faces nice. So I'm gonna let this level out and just kind of flow for about five, maybe 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna add my effects. So keep in mind, smaller projects, you get them done quicker. Um, and then if you add your effects right away, the, the resin's gonna move and flow a lot more versus like if you're doing like a full kitchen island, right? Um, different areas in the kitchen, it's gonna take you longer. So I always like to account for that when I'm doing smaller projects, I kind of let it sit for a minute. Um, but if you're doing bigger projects, right? Full gallon, half kits, 50 square foot counters, you probably wanna get that base coat down, apply your highlights right away. But since we did this so fast, I'm gonna let it sit, level out, flow over the edge. That way when I uh, apply my highlights, which is the Ligari effects, it's not gonna move as much and I can kind of keep that design once I'm done. So we let it level out, uh, flow over the edges is nice. So now we're gonna add our Ligari effects, which is our highlights. Make sure you guys are shaking these up um, and always start out with less. We can always add more. We can't really take color out of the counter. So we're gonna go for a real subtle vein look. I'm gonna blend it with our Ligari squeegee. This isn't the notch squeegee and we just cut it down to a small, small squeegee. These work awesome. So I'm just gonna go random vein patterns kind of right different directions and then we're just going to blend these in just kind of skipping across the surface i like to blend them right away so they don't start to crust over. And then I can go back and really start moving them around. You notice the more I blend it, the more it goes underneath the surface and really creates that natural look. It's that easy, guys. And if I wanna add more anywhere I can, I can keep blending it, blending it to where I want it to look. And if we wanna add a little more, we just add it Get some on our edges, a little back there. So I'll show you guys how to do like more of a vein pattern. Once you, once you squirt out your line, if you just kind of run that edge through it, you can get those tighter fracture veins. All right, but we're kind of going for just a random look. So I'm just kind of blending them randomly, but that's how you would do tighter, tighter fracture like veins instead of just random like we're doing.
So yeah, guys, I'm just, obviously these are different areas. So I'm trying to just look, make sure I got the same amount of color throughout these. I think this one goes in a different area in the house, but these are next to the fireplace on each side. So they look good, good as far as the amount of color. So what we'll do now is we'll just spritz these with the isopropyl alcohol, small to medium drops. And then we'll let that evaporate for about five, 10 minutes and I'm gonna mist the whole surface with denatured alcohol. It's gonna help it lay out glass smooth. And then obviously, you know, we wanna just focus on our faces, make sure the resin's flowing over nice and evenly, which it is, it's bringing the color of the highlights, the Ligari effects down the face. So we always wanna kind of baby those for the next hour or so and just make sure we don't have any drip marks or run marks in those faces. Okay, so I'm gonna mist this denatured alcohol. So like I said before guys, we wanna focus on our faces, right? The top, plenty of resin. We just wanna make sure when it's running over the face, we don't have any drip marks um, or uneven spots. And then if you wanna add color anywhere, right? See how the color's kinda of pulling down the face here? Right, some of these other spots are gonna to start to pull down, but if there's a spot and you wanna add some color, we can just simply put some effects, get that mixed in, and then we can kinda of just add that to the, the face. Real simple way to add color. Again, we just wanna make sure it's not lumpy or dripping there. Um, so that's an easy way to add color. And then the last thing we'll wanna do is just scrape our drips, that way we're not having to sand those drips off the next day.